crack it down. Crack Toa. Crack Toa. <laughs> we are live. <laughs> Welcome to Guys Talk Knives Live, episode number you don't even know. 119. Pretty good. We are live at Smoky Mountain Knifeworks, smkw.com. We are in the showroom again because Isaac is doing it so slow in the studio. <laughs> I mean, if he would just no, do more work. No, he's doing it correctly. <laughs> Yeah, just giving our Isaac our time. This is it's a hazing the new guy, right? Don't haze the new guy. Don't haze the new guy. He had to be in a meeting with both of us today. He did. That's hazing he enough for one day. The joy of all of us in that Golly. same meeting. <laughs> yeah, this we got to do it maskless. That is good. Social yes. distanced, maskless, yes. all of that. Um, so otherwise, we are masked here in the store. If you come in, all the employees are wearing masks. That's for, uh, yeah. You know, we've actually started all coming purposes. in to one entrance. We have, yeah, and checking temperatures for us so that yes. you guys are safe while you're getting this. Exactly, yeah. So and, that, and for the rest of the, you know our internal customers as well. Yes, making sure that we're all safe. So. Yes, I like my customers on the outside. I, I, I like I like you working like the from the house. Ones? <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. I came in just to be here today. He did. He's wearing his knife shirt for us. Those, are those this on is, the web yet? They are. This is awesome. one of my faves that we've done. It turned out good. It was a tough decision because we have what we have this, we have red, we have Blades. blue. Oh and, oh, and the colors? Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah, we have navy, we have black, we have charcoal, we have green, and that's red. It. Red, yeah. And it was a tough decision. I had to go because this is most like the original previous G.I. Joe figures from my youth. Well, I went red for Cobra. That's I still wish we could figure out a way to do the the, uh, <laughs> the alternative logo. Yes. But yes, I don't know what yes, it would be. Yes, yes. Guys, thanks for tuning in today. It's Thursday. It is Friday Eve. Yes, it is. Ready for the weekend. We're yes. going to do a whole bunch of stuff. I don't have a ton of business to get through today. I just have one thing. But we might have a we might have a little discussion before we start into the rest of this. Sweet. Um, let's see. Last week on Thursday, we gave away that Civivi Kiri EDC oh, yeah. that neck knife. Boom. Randy Clendenin. Oh, I love that last name. I, I knew a lady named uh, P uh, Pat Clendenin. Really? Up. Yeah. Maybe the first time I've ever heard that name. It's a fun name. Clendenin. Clendenin. It's like clandestine. It is like clandestine. Pat Clandestine. He I was want... a minister. Really? Yes. That's cool. I want an action shot with this thing, Randy. Randy? Randy. Yes. I want to see this being worn out in public. Yeah, send us a picture when you get it. Because uh, Melina's going to send it out as ASAP. Yeah. Uh, and uh, thanks for tuning in and all that. Oh, for sure. He's doing his DBC look right there. He was going, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have a question. Yes. My question is this. Because we work in a knife store, we've been around knives forever. Sure. We carry knives on a regular basis. What do you find yourself doing most with your knife? Wow. Because like I've got this crossbones in my pocket, and I can tell you, I put it in there because I forgot I had this one. Sure. And I love this knife. That's a great knife. It's a very pretty, long, sleek knife. What do you do with it though, on a regular basis? We work desk jobs, right? <laughs> so, here's the thing. During the day, mm -hmm. I might open a letter or a package with it. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a string on my shirt. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna cut that with it. Mm -hmm. At night, if because I do a lot of the cooking at the house, nine times out of the ten, packages have to be opened. Yeah, are open with whatever pocket knife's in my pocket, <laughs> not with the knife that I'm cutting with. Right. So, which also says why my knives usually are needing to be cleaned because they're opening, you know, bags of rice or potatoes or whatever. Okay, so this is why I brought this up. Take your answer, take the food out, unless I'm trying to get into like uh, the bag of cuties and I can't get the sure. string to tear, I might use my pocket knife for that. I don't use it for much. No. Almost nothing. Yep. But I consider, and I want to know what you guys think, this is why I brought this up, I consider knives to be pocket jewelry. Like the way that a woman Completely. might pick out a purse or a woman might pick out a knife. It, to me it is the watch. Yeah, I wear my knife. I put my knife in my pocket because I, I like to have it when I need it, but I very rarely use it. I refer to it as my pocket stuff at the house. Yes. So when I get home, my wallet, my keys, my I can always take my rings off when I get home. Uh huh. They all go. I have a little, and it literally is a little treasure chest style box. Right. Big surprise there. Right. It looks like a little pirate treasure chest that sits on the bookshelf next to a row of knives. And when I leave, it depends, and this sounds stupid, depends on what pants I'm wearing as to what knife I'm going to carry. Exactly. Or what I may be going to do. <coughs> exactly. No, if no. I'm headed out in the yard to cut grass, it is my CRKT minimalist on my belt tucked behind me. 
and that's where it stays. So I would theorize, and, and this is theory, you guys can tell me I'm completely yes. wrong, but I would theorize that not a lot of us are out bushcrafting every day. No. No. Not a lot of us are out hunting no. every day. Yes. Not a lot of us are out doing that, We're, but we carry a knife anyway. Sure. Because it has become part of who we are. It is, it is part of your outfit. Yes. It is part of your outfit. Isn't that crazy to think about? You it put your is. phone, your wallet, your keys. Sure. Your knife. Well, and your phone probably is going to travel with you regardless in the house. Right. And after I get home and I'm not outside, you know, doing stuff, okay, when I unload, my knife comes out of my pocket. But there's plenty of times that I have to go find one if I want to open something. Right. You know, we get it. It is design. nice to have it. It is a great part yeah. of, I don't know, it, something you get used to and you just enjoy. Well, we'll get it's an Amazon like, we're in a different the watch. house. And Laura goes to open it and she reaches over and takes whatever knife is in my pocket mm -hmm. to open it with. Mm -hmm. If she doesn't have the one that's in her purse with her. Right. It literally is, it's part of who you are. It's part of your identity. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, that's right. a Is good it a question. weird theory? Is it a right theory? How do you carry your knives? What do you do mostly with your knives? I, I want to hear that kind of thing. You can always DM us on Facebook. You can always message us on Instagram. Or you can tell us right here in the video in a comment. I just want to know. Because the modern knife world is different. There are certainly people who are buying them that are purpose driven. Yeah, oh, certainly. Who have a job to do that requires a knife. Mm -hmm. That requires some type of, of cutting ability mm -hmm. during the day. But that's certainly not the case for me. I mean, I could easily use just a pair of scissors. Sure. Sure. Or a kitchen knife. Sure. That's not nearly But as I cool. like carrying my knife. Yeah. I like flicking it open. Yeah. I like fidgeting with it. So that's for sure. And I mean, it's it, useful it's, when I need it. One of the reasons why I haven't bought an automatic yet, because I know I'll just sit there all day going, <laughs> So on that same note, today's show features, we've done some themed shows over the past yeah. couple of weeks. We did a fixed blade show. We did a flipper show last, uh, on Tuesday. Today is all slip joints. And they're all traditional slip joints. Some might have a few more modern materials, but they are all traditional slip joints. And I, I got to this line of questioning because I thought, a lot of people carry these as pocket candy now. Oh, sure. Uh, you like your flipper, you wear it on your, on your, clipped into your pocket, but you also drop a traditional deep in your pocket. Was there a time, there has to have been, when a new pattern came out and people went, well, that's just too new. Sure, why not? I bet they did. You know they did. Yes. Well, I don't know why you'd want that Why would you handle. need three blades? Yes. You know that discussion happened. <laughs> the same way it does now when somebody has the yes. modern folder and they yes. go, well, I just don't understand why you want that. My stockman's perfectly fine. You know, at some point in the past, somebody who had an, an old school open hill mm -hmm. looked at a slip joint and went, but I do not understand why you would need a slip joint. <laughs> Worst French it accent. It really was bad. Open air. I, feel <laughs> I do not think that you're stinking stockman. I will not use your slip joints. Oh, let's jump into these though, because we got five hundred cold. I am mushrooms. <laughs> we, we've shown, and we're, this might as well have just come out of your pocket, right? <laughs> yeah, because I, I but I realized, day. looking at yours over and over again, that we had not put the cotton sampler of this Telling series yes. on the show. This is part of that uh, uh, Green Macarta series. Is it the Green Macarta series? The classic Macarta, Macarta, Macarta. Macarta. Classic it Macarta. is classic Macarta. Classic, classic Macarta. Macarta. It's green Macarta. I'm going to put it down here so Jason can tell you about this knife, or I can just rip through it if you really want to. Go for it. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you designed the thing. Did it. This is a Rough Rider Classic Macarta. It does have the uh, 440A stainless steel blades with a satin finish. That is a steel bolster. It has uh, uh, nickel silver pins. It has um, a uh, nickel silver back-to-back uh, -back RR shield. It has the green Macarta handles with black underliners. Does that have the black underliners? Yes, it does. Yeah, it does. They're, there. They're hard Black. to spot because of the way that they blend them in the car. And the monitor I'm looking at right now is really glary. So it is nice right there. It has black underliners. Those are uh, uh, steel liners as well on this thing. Yep. This is a cotton sampler pattern. This is a fun pattern to keep in your hand. It's because it's so different. People always say something about it. Oh, yeah. Half stops, match strike pulls. The pulls are nice and tight on this. You can see the half type, uh, the half stop right there. Drop it down. The walk and talk is fabulous, and the lanyard hole on this thing as well. That uh, classic part of cotton sampler is only $15, bucks, $14.99 at smkw.com. Now, tell me why you carry this thing all the time. Not this one, but the one that you carry all the time. Uh, number one, the fact that it looks different. 
mm -hmm. which is one of the reasons mm -hmm. I dig it, is because you don't see that shape blade very often. Right. Um, also, it is extraordinarily useful. This so. nice wide belly blade uh -huh. is great for cutting open boxes, letters, packages. That's a great stuff point. Stuff in the kitchen. Open that knife all the way. Show it them is what, a, what do you mean by it that? It is a really, you've got this nice little, what would be in use back in the day to actually measure the tensile strength of cotton, which is what this is. Um, you would have actually stuck this in the side and cored out a piece of uh -huh. cotton from a veil. Um, that's why it was a cotton sampler. Right. But because you've got that piece, you've actually got a really good area to bear down in to get in and cut something open. It so like a great, with a box, this, a ends up being, disassembler. this ends up being like the Lucas Burnley one serrate because of that belly. It does, yeah. For a box. So if you were looking at this, let's go two again, Isaac. So if you're looking at this, see how deep that belly is? I can take this and put it in to the crack of a box. Yep. And I don't touch anything on the inside. I can just literally drag it back and I've cut the entire tape on a box exactly. without digging a point in or stabbing myself because this is almost like a spade blade sure. on the top. So you do still have that little bit of a point though. So uh -huh. if you need to actually pierce, you can. I just, I really, other part I like about it, because of the size of my hand, that handle is perfect for me. Um, it fits your hand, it doesn't move around a lot, no hot spots. Mm -hmm. I just, I like that style. Plus, other side of that, back to our original discussion, it's very cool pocket candy. It's a, it's a full-size traditional pocket knife. Mm -hmm. And when you put that out, people go, well that, I haven't seen that before. Right. What is that? And then you have this story to tell. So my question ends up too on this. What, what do you tell people who uh, worry about a slip joint closing down? I mean, it's a non-locking blade. A slip joint is non-locking. I can tell you what I tell them. That question always makes me laugh because I want to ask what they're doing with it that's going to make it close. <laughs> Unless I'm trying to, I don't know, batter something to death with a very thin part of this blade, I don't know why you would ever use it this way. And the nice thing is when you want to close it, it literally is a one-hand closer. Just watch your finger, trust me, you can lose the tip of the finger. And, and here's the thing. <laughs> Use the knife the way it's designed, it yeah. will not close on you. No, Don't cut can. against the blade. So you're not going to insert and then come up. If you come up, it's closing on you. Yeah. But you don't cut with the back of a blade. No. So cut with the blade down. Go down. That question Go forward. always makes me laugh. Don't pull back. Go forward. I really like having a lock. What, what better lock than friction? <laughs> I'm going to push this way. That's right. I'm going to whittle. I'm going to push this way. Do you remember when I'm, I'm going to skin something? Something. I'm going to push this way. Do you remember when I found the video of the Irish guy building his entire lean-to with a pocket knife with his oh, stockman? Yeah. yeah, he cut down trees. Yeah, everything. And it didn't ever with close on No, because he <laughs> they sell, he says in the video, and it's so funny. I'm not even going to try the accent, but he says in the video, <laughs> if it folds up on you, you don't need to be carrying a knife in the first place. And not to be rude, but he's not wrong. I mean, even if you're even if you're doing a draw cut that's coming towards you, question, you're still pushing, pulling against it. They aren't made for stabbing. No, they are not no, made for stabbing. No, but you probably no. could. Barrington pointed that out. He well, also pointed out that y'all need to switch hats. We're not switching no. hats. Because he would be way no. too matchy matchy. <laughs> yes. We don't need matchy matchy on this show. Bad Harrington. What's that? <laughs> What was the price on this again? Uh, $14.99. $14.99. There's a whole series of these uh, classic Micarta knives from Rough Rider, built by hand, back for life. And we probably got eight or nine different cotton samplers on the yes. site. Yes, Maybe yes. more than that. I may be underselling that, but just type in cotton sampler, they're all pop up for you. And we have two sizes of this. This is the full size yeah. cotton sampler. The, the smaller one is about that long. And just so you know, I can't think of another traditional pocket knife brand that does a cotton sampler. No. So if you want one, you're probably buying a Rough Rider. Yeah, or finding a really old one. Yeah, no kidding, right? Right. I so, actually I fell in that hole one night. I didn't tell you that. I actually was looking at those online pictures of them. Mm -hmm. It's way cool. There are so many variations. They're yeah, they're very. It odd. makes you wonder how many people were sampling cotton. Moved a lot of cotton, man. <laughs> they, they did moved a lot yes, of cotton. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, probably more than we want to imagine. Are you ready for some brandy wine? Well, because Kershaw we're, couldn't name it a stockman. We're gonna put you away. Here's some brandy wine. Some brandy wine. That's what it is. I know, but your brandy accent wine. is atrocious. Get you some brandy, some brandy wine. wine. <laughs> is that wine made by brandy or is that brandy No, it would be wine? wine fortified with brandy. Like a port. <laughs> <laughs> but still, it's kind of strange. I don't want your pino grigio. <laughs> I don't even know the name. 
games. No, no, the, the, the one the, the Cabernet. You can't say the one you want, which is the Merlot. The Merlot. Yes, that was. I'm not drinking seat. anymore. Merlot. <laughs> Okay, Kershaw put out some. We've had another one of these on the show too. Kershaw put out a series of traditional uh, slip joint pocket knives. That was this year. really good. They do. We have some special things of these coming too. Yes, we do. Hopefully, we'll get them in soon. Um, everybody goes, Kershaw, why would you do that? Kershaw did this before. Oh, sure they did. They've done traditional slip joints before. Yes. They haven't done them in a while. Well, I mean, that's something they kind of bring out of the vault occasionally and say, hey, we can still make this kind of knife. Yeah. And this is a basically a Serpentine Stockman. Yeah. Uh, called the Brandy Wine. So the Kershaw Brandy Wine has 7CR17 MOB stainless steel blades. It has a satin finish on each of the blades, black G10 handles. Uh, it has a nail neck for opening. Uh, it's, it's, of course, is a slip joint. I always hate the term slip joint lock because it's not a lock. It's not a lock. But is it, that actually a, written there? No. I just always think it when I see it. Um, it's a it's a slip joint knife, 3.5 inches closed, 6.2 inches overall with that longest blade opened up, um, and it weighs 2.3 ounces. Yeah. This, that is a it's a good looking yeah. traditional pocket knife. Right. From a company that you don't expect that from. So this would be just a, a, t a tiny bit smaller. Uh, than a large stockman, but it's yeah. bigger than our small stockman. Yes, it is. It's stockman. kind of in the middle. Yeah. Of those between the, the the large and the medium. And I really like what they did with the uh, uh, with the spay because they've made it fat on the end of like a sword. I noticed. Let that. me go yeah. to again real quick, and I'll show you. It's a little bit different. Shape. So see this spay? Instead of being a straight spay, it actually gets wider towards the tip. I mean, I got a wide belly spay, I uh -huh. guess. And then you got a sheep's foot, and then you got a clip point, and yeah. it looks like a California clip. Yep. It's a very laid out clip. Do these have half stops? No, no half stops no on half these. Stops. But the, the sound is nice. That oh one. no, they got great walk and talk in it. Again, it's a good looking knife. I, the G10 looks fantastic. Um, I, I you do get, think they nailed that G10. They did. Was, you, there any, any rub? was there any rub? Not that I saw. I don't think I don't so. think so. Let me see. I'm looking down the channel of the knife to see if the blades are touching each other. That one's not touching. This one it looks like it might be barely touching the liner, but I'm going to see if there's any rub to it. No rub on that blade. You check that side. Any so, rub? No. For the uninitiated, let's talk about blade rub. Let's talk about also, we've done this before, but let's talk about positioning of the knife blades in a traditional pocket knife. Okay, so let's go to you again and I'll show you. Let's talk knife rub first. Okay, so here is the channel. Blade rub. Uh, and, and it really, they all kind of go together, but when you have a multi blade knife, especially a two ended, jack uh, like this we've got three blades in here we have to fit them all into this channel and if you look if I get this straight you can see that this blade actually bends to the left to avoid the uh, smaller which blade is that the spade that's on the outside yep. now if I don't center these up right not center them if I don't hammer these out to miss each other then they touch and when they touch they'll cause rub to happen on the actual blade face You'll have a line. You'll have a mark where that blade touched that blade. These all sit nicely in the channel. They None of them touch each other. And a lot of people will look at this from time to time and go, wow, man, that blade's crooked. It's not. It's been hammered to be in the right spot. So while it might look like it veers off, that's right. Yep, that is right. That's right, because somebody put them in the, in the right spot. Here's the piece. So with a modern folder, a one-bladed folder, mm -hmm. that is going to be a very, very straight line down the center. Mm -hmm. Because it has to be, because of the way the mechanisms work. And the pivot has to line up, the bearings have exactly. to touch. Yeah. With a slip joint pocket knife, that final step of blade placement is always done by hand. It's always where they've got to go in and each one's going to be a little different. If we're going to hammer those, not we, I'm not doing it. But <laughs> They're, the company's going to hammer those to make sure that everything sits correctly in the channel so that you don't have blade rub and so that everything opens the way it's supposed to. And it all is dependent on how many blades all those you've pieces got. work together because you've also got to make sure that the slip joint on the back, the back spring, and uh -huh. the blade itself lock into place too. There's a lot of pieces in there that have to work. There's, while this probably takes a lot more engineering to get the balance right sure. and the pivot to turn right and the flipping action to happen and how the bearings on the inside work with the blade itself, that's a lot of engineering. Yeah, of course. This is a lot of craftsmanship. Yes. Because yes. you're going to take each one and do something different to each one to make it perfect. Well, and back in the day, you were looking at each of these being built probably by one craftsman at a time. Mm -hmm. 
going through the entire process. Now you're actually, you know, for like the Artisan series especially, we know that those come through and the pieces are put together and then all of a sudden the last step, again, because they're all built by hand, is then making sure the blades line up correctly. What was the price on the brand new one? Uh, price of the brand new one was twenty five ninety nine. That's pretty 26 good. Bucks. Twenty six bucks from Kershaw. For, great knife. Right. Seven CR is going to be pretty close to four forty. Um, so, and if you're a Kershaw person, if you love Kershaw and ZT, and you want that something different to carry, do it. Yeah. Do it. Get that Kershaw traditional, and just see what it's like. Because that, to me, there's there's something very very cool about carrying a traditional Oh yeah, knife. for sure. I put the next one on for Tobias. We I have, did. Have we ever shown one of these? Uh, not on the show. Yeah, I don't think we have. I've shown some toothpicks, but not a, fisher, a fisherman's knife. Yeah. Uh, or the, uh, it is just the fishing, knife, fishing knife from yeah. Case. This right here was made to be a fishing tool. And yes. it has some specific parts that let you do quite a few things. I know that Tobias tells me that that blade is perfect for filleting. Yeah, yeah so, it is. Because it's a nice wide belly. Yep. Let's go to and I'll show you. It's a very, very cool knife. So this is the Case Amber Jigged Bone Fishing Knife. Uh, it has a it has mirror polished, true sharp, clip point blade, and a scalar blade with a hook disgorger and amber jig bone handles. The handles feature nickel silver holsters, brass pins, and liners. It has a hook sharpener shield. So that shield is actually designed for sharpening hooks. It's a stone. Oh, gotcha. We're moving around in the showroom. Hang on just a second, we'll go back to the We got the room. train coming through. <laughs> it's got the kids on it. So this fishing knife has mirror polished, true sharp, clip point blades, uh, and a clip point blade and a scalar blade with a hook disgorger and amber jig bone handles. The handles feature nickel silver bolsters and brass pins and liners. It has a hook sharpener shield. So like Andy was saying, that's an actual stone for sharpening a hook on the outside of that. Uh, it has four and a quarter inches closed, and it is made in the USA by Case. So yeah, you got a disgorger right here. Uh, you've got a scaler right there. Left off that description, we got to get in there. There's a cap lifter it's in a there cap too. Lifter. Yep, right there. Which you... any fishing knife ought to have that. That's right. I just think it's cool that you can sharpen up your hook right there on the shield. Yeah. But look at this. I'm going to stay here for a second. So. Look how good that is and flexible I'm that is. I'm telling you, it's a, it's a great knife. It's fun. I put my Every big fisherman, fingerprints right on it. Yeah, of course. Uh, wait till I handle it. It'll be disgusting. Uh, Tobias loves a toothpick. Tobias a loves a fishing knife. A large toothpick. Yeah. This is pretty close to large. It's not quite it's, there. I think it is large. Is it large? It is, yeah. I think there's sure one that's a little bigger than that. It might be. The Texas toothpick is Yee. a little bit bigger. Yeah. Um, no, I, I agree. It is a very, very functional knife. It's sixty five ninety nine. Yeah, sixty six. Genuine bucks. bone handles. That is not bad for a case knife, just in general. Right. But especially one that is a, you know, this is not going to be. I mean, you can carry this and use it just in everyday carry for sure. But as an actual right. legit. Come to right back. Morris, right? Come to right back. Morris. Yeah, Morris. Uh, <laughs> but. As an actual tool to use for fishing, for actually, you know, dropping it in a toolbox or just keep it in your vest if you're fishing, fantastic. I mean, it, it has all those pieces you need. I, I am not a big fisherman in general, but I like them. That's what I just said? I said it. I said it. It's a nice old cap lifter. That's right. Because I don't listen to you. I know she That's does. true. She does. <laughs> um, that, probably the most useful thing on the entire tool. You think so? I don't fish, so you know what that's for? What? It's for getting the hook out of the fish. Ah. So the hook's down in there, you take that, you hook it on the end of the hook. When I get when I get a fish, it comes with hush puppies. And crunchies. <laughs> so And crunchies. And crunchies. Crunchies are the best part. That's, that's the only part. It is the only part. Or batter the better. <laughs> You've never filleted a fish on the side of a creek no. and cooked it? No. No, I have not. Kind of fun. I'm it's telling you, the apocalypse comes, it's over for me. We'll take care of you, Andy. Thank you. We'll take care of you. Thank you. You need but no, that's a, relief. That's right. No, that's a, that's a great <laughs> knife, though, and, and while my filleting skills are not tremendous at all, um, that is sharp as crap. Yeah, I'm not going to cut paper with it. I've had, I've had some uh, case uh, uh, paper sharpening or paper cutting experience here. That is pretty sharp. That thing has an edge. Should we do it? Should we give, give it, it a shot, Should we man. give it a shot? I think it'll I'm, work. I'm gonna break my own rules. We're, we're gonna do the double side first so it gets a little easier on us. 
see, there's Kate in there. <laughs> this is why I don't. The case. But well, trust me, four fillet of fish is going to work fine. <laughs> it's it's pretty sharp. Yeah. I was just catching edge with them. That's funny. It is. It is funny. <laughs> I did not know that. 65. 65 99. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really cool diving again. Something we haven't shown in the show before. Yep. And neither is this one. You know, no, I want to put at least one fancy knife on the show, and oh, I felt like yep. this was yes, fancy no, without being did. fancy. Boker. No, it's fancy. Boker. That's a, that's a very, very cool. It's castle wood. Did it come from a real castle? Yes. It, it did? Yes. Yes. So tell me about this. Do you know about this? Remember you have to talk really loud. Um, they were tearing down and remodeling a castle in Germany. So they're tearing down and remodeling a castle. And they harvested the wood. Yep, nice. Part of, I, I don't remember exactly. It's a castle. Yeah. So it really came from a castle. Yeah, it's reclaimed wood from the castle. Wow. Yeah. That's fancy. That dude is boker. It's like if you want, old wood. Yeah, if you want the, the weirdest tweaks to a knife. It is Boker every time. So you just see the Boker people, they're just roaming the roaming the countryside the in Europe man. and yes. they're just like, Can we see your castle? Like, sure, come on in. Send one guy off to the side, he's like cutting off pieces of wood. Dude, no, they had they had some, <laughs> I guarantee it was in the paper and some of the went, Hey, you know what? Let's go buy all of that wood. We're gonna use it to make something. It's pretty cool, let's look at it. It's very cool. So this is the Boker Barlow Stockman. This is a very strange pattern. Castle wood. Three inch, zero dash one carbon steel with an acid wash finish. Uh huh. Gives it a really old, rustic, worn in look. Mm -hmm. um, it has, of course, a nail nick for opening. The handles are castle wood with brass pins and liners, nickel silver bolsters, as well as a boker tree shield there on the side. Four inches closed, weighs 2.12 ounces, and is made in Germany by Boker. From real castle wood. Yes. So this is basically a stockman with one blade. Yeah. They call it a Barlow stockman all they want, but I think that was just to refer to the one blade. But I that would is think so. that is a stockman handle with one blade, which I think is kind of cool. I think it's very cool. What one blade patterns are pretty nifty. It has such a antiquey look. Yes. It is very, very old school. Nice. And Contiki. <laughs> because of the amount of workmanship <coughs> and everything in this, it is one forty six twenty one. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, it's got it's got some price tag to it. That's because it came from the good castle, not the white castle. <laughs> I just got the drum from you did. Isaac. I did. You did. Well, if it was a crystals, they'd square. He gave me the thumbs up, up a minute ago and threw me off. I don't know what he was doing. I'll, I, I'll switch to this. <laughs> <laughs> I really dig the look of that and I'm like you I kind of like the, the one blade I love the acid finish on it yeah I love the acid finish that reminds me of knife my dad carried forever uh, because of how long he carried a carbon steel blade it ends up looking like oh that. yeah completely and totally mm -hmm. I love the handle you know some wood handles that are this rustic looking mm -hmm. you would think oh it's gonna be a little rough on the edges mm -hmm. it's not at all they say that that they it feels really better really than well. the whiskey barrel wood it does Yes, mm -hmm. it does. Mm -hmm. That's a very, very cool knife. Pretty decent sound on the closing. No half stop. Nope. But the walk and talk's pretty decent. Only half stop on the table right now is uh, the Rough Rider. Jace. Nice. Very cool. What was yeah. the price saying? 146.21. Collector's piece for sure. Yeah, there's not Boker. many of those out there. Yep, 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 yep. Any questions, comments, thoughts, concerns before we go to our last knife? No. 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 Funny when oh, she's wait, over. Zach. Zach. Zach said something. Zach said, "Thank you, Jason, for the spider cocoa carrier. Appreciate it. Sweet. Nice. Yes. Nice. Very good. Let's jump into the last one. This is part of that new D2 series from Marbles. Yes. Woo hoo! These are selling like crazy. This is a jumbo. No, it's a. It's a jumbo trapper. Okay. I was going to yeah. say a hunter there for a second. No, it's it's a jumbo, jumbo trapper. trapper. It's a big knife. It's a beast, man. It is a massive pocket knife. But let's look at it up close. Oh. So this whole series is D2 steel and black canvas micarta from Marbles. Um, 
and they just they all have that same very classic do what every time she starts oh, talking yeah. the thing goes by um all very classic looking uh so the d2 steel blades have a mirror polish half stops match strike poles the handles are black canvas micarta it has ringed nickel silver bolsters brass pins and liners and a nickel silver marbles d2 shield which i think that shield looks really really cool are those brass those pins are nickel yes they those are those pins are nickel so the liners are, are definitely brass, brass but the pins the are nickel pins silver are nickel Mm -hmm. That is for certain. Mm -hmm. um, it has a nickel silver marbles D2 shield as well. This trapper is, has a 4.125 inch California clip and spay blade. The blades are a sixteenth of an inch thick. It is five inches close and weighs six ounces because it is a big daddy traditional pocket knife. It is huge. That is a working knife. That is a, I actually have to go outside and cut stuff knife. <laughs> this is not a knife for playing around. This is a knife for getting crap done. I love this. This is the uh, this is the clip or the spade that we put in the large moose too. Yeah. I love that one. Just that that wide belly. It's very it's yeah. I mean if you've got to spay something you can get up there with That's way what high. you want to use, yeah. I love that. That's your spay in hand. <laughs> it is. That's, uh, you know, because I spay so many animals. Exactly. <laughs> Something well, I have not done. What was the close length on that again? Um, close 136 is five feet. inches. Five inches. Is that five inches? What it says. <laughs> <laughs> like I measure this work up the Yeah, show. that's probably so, five that, inches. Probably you don't know the answer to this question. Yes. The difference between that trapper and the Panama trapper, which oh. is the case trapper. Okay, so a little bit. If you bit. don't know, I, I know. You know? Yeah. Okay, so tell us. It's a whole different blade configuration, first off. Okay. okay. Off, the Panama trapper is a half inch smaller. Okay. Oh, okay. And does, the Panama doesn't have the hump in the middle, does it? Yeah. It does? Yeah. Okay. So a little bit different blade configuration, um, smaller than this uh, Marbles D2 yeah, see, that Jumbo has, Trapper. The, the Panama Trapper has a um, muskrat clip. Not muskrat clip, but a, you know that funky clip? Yeah. It's, uh, clip. it's not the, a regular clip. No, no, this is a, God, this is a tech, Texas Tickler style clip. It's got a recurve. It says California clip. Explain the difference. You see it? Oh yeah, I do see that. You've got, it's a long, it's a long clip point. So, okay. yes. So like if you're looking at the Panama, the Panama's clip area starts here and goes way out, but doesn't go down a lot. Okay. Um, this one basically is a Texas tickler. I call that because you, you'll reach out and touch somebody with it, but it's a clip point and it has the recurve. So you have a bigger belly okay. here on the end. All those. So tickers. Texas tickler, California clip, same thing? No, California clip is... Because it says California clip and I was just curious. You're going to get a bunch of different names for a bunch of okay. different blade styles. But really what you're looking for for that difference between the California and a regular clip. So a regular clip's going to come out. Everybody, surely to goodness we have one on the table somewhere. That's not really it either. Let's see. And this is definitely a California clip on this. It's actually been done even yeah. more. Okay. No, there it is. There's a difference. There's a good difference. Okay. Keep that one out. So I don't know if you can see on camera very well. I'm going to try to keep it between us so you can see. But see how far this straight line goes before it's clipped out of the blade? Sure. On the Californias, like you find in a it muskrat, it much starts further back. way back, like you see right here, and okay. more is clipped out. All right. Yeah. So that's the difference. You're going to find this like in a combat style knife or a hunting knife, sure. that kind of thing. You're going to find this in more like a skinning type style knife. Gotcha. That makes sense. The secondary blade is completely different. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and definitely in the Panama, the secondary blade is a spear point, isn't it? It's either a Zulu spear or a drop. A Zulu spear or a drop. I still love this one. It's a, it's a very good looking, again, that is a, that is a knife for using. I'm going to do this again today. I'm going to have the worst cutting day ever. There you go. Maybe I need a better piece of paper. Maybe not a reaper. You give me another piece of paper? I will. All kinds of paper. <laughs> There we go. Yeah. Yes. So these marbles are made in the same factory as Rough Rider. Yep. Just so you know. 
beast. That thing is a beast. Again, it is a beast. You, you want a camp knife that's just a good all around camp knife? Mm -hmm. That. This is it. I Tell mean, them the price point on that thing again. You took my paper away. I did. <laughs> and <laughs> cut it up. $19.99. Yeah, 20 bucks. $20. Four of those in that series, I think? Uh, yes. All on the site. Got stock in all of them still, though they are moving very, very quickly. The Micarta on these... It looks, it's hurdy. It is as good as the G10 is on the Kershaw. Hold it up. Go to two. You go to two. Yeah. Two. You can see the G10 over here has that great G10 pattern uh, where you can see that they've had layers and they've worn it down. Same thing with the Micarta in this. You can see the Micarta. That's what I look for. I want to be able to see the G10. I want to be able to see the Micarta and the pattern that's in it. Yep. Um, and those those two are maybe the best examples I've seen in a long time. They're very, very, very good. Yeah. Questions, comments, thoughts, concerns? No. No. Give away the budget. No way. No. Can't do it. <laughs> I'm down for this though. Yeah, me too. That's the, of the ones on the table, though I adore this for the look. If I was buying one to use, especially because I already have that one, I'm buying this one. Yeah. Well, we've got other things to get through first before we get to that decision. Do we? We do. We have pocket dump time. Yes, so this is this is in my pocket almost all the time anyway. But besides that, oh, you got your I no, you tomahawk. Your tomahawk. I always say I think I always say Osprey when you pull it out because I bought the Osprey. Artisan the Osprey. tomahawk it is the knife blade that defies gravity. <laughs> Every time you do that, I think you're gonna throw it across the table. <laughs> um, I adore this knife. Um, it's, it's not well very moved, stabby, stabby, stabby and pokey, but uh, it cuts like a dream. It's fun. I stuck, uh, I had, I always forget about this knife. I showed it a little bit earlier. Yeah. That's the CRKT Crossbones. Good knife. Um, this was a gift to me from CRKT, and yep. I appreciate that very, very much. Uh, I just love the sleekness of this knife and the affordability yeah. of it as well. It's in a great price range. I can't think of what that is off the top of my head, but just type Crossbones in at smkw.com. It's that nice run of very slim modern folders like the CEO and the Quaken mm -hmm. that all kind of have that same profile. It's like a and steak they, knife. They, they're wonderful. It's pretty. Have you used a steak knife? I have not. You should. I have not. I did cut some packaging open with it the other day. That's why I remembered I had it. Use this for steak knife. You just butcher the whole cow. Butcher the whole cow. <laughs> what do you got, Melina? I finally got it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I did. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's it's pretty nice. SR22? They've been listening to me talk about buying it forever. Oh, we'll show it again. We'll go right here. That is a beautiful lion steel. Beautiful knife. SR22? SR22? SR22, guys. This is that, you know, that single body construction on it, all mm -hmm. one piece. Got the roto lock on the frame lock. Uh, the steel is what? Do you know? Is it in 390? It should be on there. Sleipner. 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 It's just a nice. I like the crowned uh, top on the spine. Do they do anything wrong at Lion Steel? I don't think so. Because that knife is all right. And, and the action on these That's is biggest. just amazing. It's wonderful. And that flipper is so undersized, you see it and go, uh, uh, uh. Yeah, I'm not going to be wrong. It's like, bing. Nope. Yeah. Yes. It's a knife that wants to be open. So we won't have groceries at the house this week, but she's getting a brand <laughs> new knife. The thing that sticks out on these to me is that one piece milled construction handle. Yes. You don't see that a lot. G6 aluminum. It's very, very different. And I don't know that it changes anything in the knife, mm -hmm. but it looks really cool. That's nice. Yeah. I'll keep this worth your No, mine. Love it. What else we got? Anybody else asking any questions? Yeah, Nothing? Guys, we're brought to you by Smoky Mountain Knifeworks, smkw.com, the world's largest knife store, period. Both online and yep. in person behind For me. Sure. If you've never been here, come on out. I will tell you, if you do come right now, we are open Sunday through Thursday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., Friday and Saturday, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Our entire staff is wearing masks, and yep. uh, we're doing that for your protection. We've got hand sanitizer all throughout the store. We want you to be safe while you're here, so just <coughs> as I cough I know, on yeah. command. Uh, so we're taking the necessary precautions for you. Make sure you stay safe as well. I put you in a back to tank. <laughs> in a back to tank? I don't even know what that is. Star Wars. <laughs> That's why I don't know what that is. No. Um, make sure you're following us on Facebook and on Instagram. We have a giveaway on Facebook every week. We have a giveaway on YouTube as well. 
Make sure if you're following us on YouTube that you subscribe to the channel, that you hit the notification bell so that you can get notified every time we put out a brand new piece of content. Yep. And as of this meeting, a morning's meeting, Isaac has a lot on his plate because he's going to have to start producing some brand new content. For he's got him. some really cool video ideas coming out. Yes. And, uh, and he has to have them done by next Thursday, so. <sighs> I don't remember that at all from the meeting. Oh, uh, it's, it's a new deadline we've just set. Yeah. All um, five of them. All five of them. There should be some really, really cool stuff coming out. Some, no, some just... great content for you guys. And uh, that's kind of what we're here for. I mean, yes, we, we've got, as, as Tony likes to say, we've got a lot of knives. We'd like to sell some. Yeah. But we also want to make it fun. We want to get you guys into carrying something different, something odd, and knowing more about the sharp and pointy things that you dig. So let's give away that D2. Yes, that jumbo sure. trapper right there. Great idea. I want to know what your weekend plans are. Yes. That's what I want to know. That's what you're going to respond with. Tell me what you're doing this weekend. That's all you have to put in is to enter this contest. Tell me what you're doing this weekend in a comment. Uh, we will randomly draw the winner by next Wednesday, the Thursday. Yep. Yeah, and tell you who won on Thursday's show. It is that Jumbo Trapper from Marbles. It's the brand new D2 series. Tell me what you're going to do this weekend. I don't care how boring it is. Or how exciting it is. She's going to show off her knife. Tell us what this would help make your weekend better. What you could use that for. Or just tell us about your weekend. Boat anchor. A boat anchor. Just tie it in the middle, drop it over the side. <laughs> Guys, on that note. Knife. I don't know what's going on now. I'm like coughing and belching all at the same time. <laughs> I have to put you down. <sighs> Just take me behind the building and Try. put one in me. <laughs> this. Uh, that would hurt. Guys, Thank Isaac has done a great job on the board today. He's been producing the, the show man. as we speak. Isaac is the Melina, man. Melina, as always. Doing her thing with all the questions. She's fantastic. Jason, just showing up for a change. I'm I appreciate it. adequate. Just showing up. <laughs> Just showing up. <laughs> Me, I'm here always. And that's also what the happens. man. So I'm Andy. I'm going to get out of here. We'll see you on Tuesday. Have a great weekend. We will be back with a whole other episode of Guys Talk Knives For live. Sure. Number 120. Boom. What? Yes. See you next time, guys. We're going to give away 120.